bubble gum and kick ass. All out of bubble. Go ahead. Make my day. Cinema Royale. I'm too old for this shit. I can't believe that just fucking happened. Groovy. Hello, welcome to Cinema Royale, where we chew bubblegum and talk about movies. I'm your host, Mike, and this episode is brought to you by the rap album known as Mickey Unwrapped. Oh, God. He, yeah, well, my, Mike showed me that, and I'm like, oh, Jesus. Am I, I mean, it's like, it makes Kids Bop look like freaking Little Wayne or something. <laughs> I got to check that out. You totally stole my thunder there, didn't you? Yeah, I, I just wanted to because I was... God, I so want to do it. If you don't know what uh, they... If mouse you don't... in a cage. Call it a mouse trap. <laughs> if you know what... I'll just leave you with uh, the thoughts of Ice Ice Mickey. You can't botch this. Ducks in the hood. Uh, what a mouse. U-C-K! Whoop, there it went. Oh my god, it's so <laughs> bad. Uh, wait, are we talking about their dignity? Maybe. Yeah, that's the perfect song for it. <laughs> oh, Little whoop. Red Wrapping Hood? Yes. And Oops. actually, honestly enough, that song has been used for a lot of dance dance videos out there for like girls reciting and for like I'm like really you're using that fucking song yeah for like little, di little dance classes yeah or yeah like pom poms or fucking talent shows like okay dude these kids know what album that came off from <laughs> I'm going to dance to dude, Ice Ice Nikki <laughs> By Mickey Mouse. Oh, I'm chasing uh, uh, them. Uh, this, uh, this summary sums it up right here. One day when we are all dead and gone, scientists will find this amazing album and realize that no matter what has been accomplished in the millions of years this universe has existed, this and always will be the greatest and most important song ever recorded. Unwrapped. Oh, jeez. <laughs> I had to mention it because we were going to talk about music anyways. Mm -hmm. Wait, I just want to put this up, just like a little preview. Okay, that's enough. I had enough. <laughs> <laughs> like, just like, just when I clicked on it, I realized this is the worst thing. Oh, God. I want to oh. choke. That was good. That was a good preview. <laughs> Anyways, the thing is, is that you should check out the album. Like, you should check out like the album cover of this. Like, I know Mickey Mouse trying to get swag. Yep, exactly. He has his jeans all down, hanging out. And... I don't know if this is just sad or so stupid it's funny. You, you gotta. Okay, uh, just take the album cover and stick it on this portion of the episode. I will. But, uh, um, Hashtag ha <laughs> ha. Uh, but seriously, uh, yeah, five seconds of that, and I say, give me mouse or size any day, any day. <coughs> Anyways, besides that episode sponsorship by that album. <clears throat> Uh, let me introduce you to the esteemed film aficionados that you've been hearing, <laughs> including James, including James Sullivan, also known as Hymitude. This episode is also brought to you by The Rhythm. It's gonna get you. And Matt Brunet, also known as Animat. And I'm Animat. Do not forget my name. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so yeah, this episode, as you can see by the title of this episode, is music, musical movies, movie musicals, musical films, whatever you want to call it. They're not the Broadway-based mus musicals, they're the original musicals. Sometimes they can be this and that, and they can be 
jukebox musicals or what have you. There's so many of them out there. And no, there is no Mickey unwrapped movie musical. Thank freaking God. <laughs> oh, wouldn't that be? Oh, a treat? rats! I would have so paid for that. Oh, that would be a treat for that. <laughs> be like, <laughs> I could only imagine what that would be like. Disney probably do something like that. Jeez, it's like, <sighs> like which one is worse? Make a Mickey unwrapped musical movie or just. Bring back Miley Cyrus as she is now to Disney. Oh. <laughs> I will not jump on the Miley hate train. I will not jump on the Miley hate train. I'm just saying. Um. We'd like to start. Okay. All right. All right. I guess I'll start with one because, um, Throughout my entire life, I, I've practically grown up with musicals, you know, and there are just so many to talk about. I even went, um, I would often go to New York City and I even saw some musicals, um, rather it be The Producers, Spamalot, which is based on Monty Python and the Holy Grail, um, The Lion King, and um, The Phantom of the Opera as well. So... I really, I honestly don't know where to start, but that's a bit of my background. But if I do, would start, hey, screw it. Hey, hey I'm out of match, screw it. Let's start with a freaking Disney, a freaking Disney musical. Because, like, throughout the whole, throughout the, its entire history, they've been well known for, for, for doing that. So, um, any, are there any Disney musicals, like, you guys want to start with specifically, or just like talk about just Disney, mu- like Disney's music in general? Well, and we're I, not uh, Disney unwrapped, Mickey unwrapped. So. <laughs> just, just pick whatever you feel is most important to talk about. What are the highlights of Disney musicals? Well. I guess I'll start from the very. I guess we could start from the very beginning. Snow with um, the one that pretty much started it all, Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs. It's a very like. This is the one that pretty much set the basis of um, how future Disney animated films would be later on, and Snow White is essentially the one that began. And honestly, the song with the songs themselves. They are more like an upbeat, whimsical thing. But that's pretty much how the movie is. Like, Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs, the best way to describe it, is pretty much a set... It's like a 90... Mi- it's How many minutes? It's, it's a feature-length silly symphony. Like, you know those Disney animated shorts that, that Disney made? Like, that's not Mickey Mouse, but it's like more fantasy-oriented and a lot more whimsical than the Mickey cartoons. That's pretty much Snow yeah. White in a nutshell. It's yeah, really... the ones with the dancing trees and whatnot. Yeah, it, it, yeah, th- that's essentially Snow White. I mean, you got the happy doors, you got the ha- like, the happy, uh, tur- like, the, the happy animals helping each other out, you know, all happy, it's like, all happy and smiles, and, like, the tone can often get corny, but they really do it in a good way. Like uh, when we see the witch, like when the evil queen turns herself into the witch, like it's really, it's a corny but really freaky scene. Considering that she would, like throughout the whole time, she would talk about her plans with the audience. But it's, but like they've done it in a good way. It's like, it's really corny. It's really cheesy. Like it wouldn't even get a pass like, in today's age, but, you know, it, it's the good kind. Like, it doesn't... I, I don't think it really aged very well, but it really is an important animated feature. Hmm. Interesting. Hmm. Well, it's not going to be like the 1987 Snow White musical film. What? It was a 97 Snow White? Wait. Snow White, 1987. Oh, 
87. No way. Oh, here it is. Here's the app. <laughs> it is so bad. <laughs> it's not like the Snow White that Disney made. It's it's not good. Oh my god, the seven con I just saw the, the names of the um of the doors. Oh my god. There's Itty, there's Biddy, there's Kitty, there's Diddy, there's Biddy, there's Giddy, and there's Liddy. <laughs> what if they couldn't find that anything else that rhymed with Itty? I I guess not. <laughs> Schmitty, the special dwarf. I don't know. I mean, that's a complete mm-hmm. opposite of what mm-hmm. you just explained, Matt. This movie is just the opposite. Like, uh, I can't even explain it. It's like it doesn't have the like. It's cheesy, but it doesn't have the charm. It's yes, exactly. Uh, Those exact words: cheesy, but no charm. Yeah. So it's pretty much blue cheese. <laughs> Where Snow, where Snow, where the Disney Snow White is cheddar cheese that everyone loves. This one is like freaking blue cheese, where you taste it and you just want it out of your system. That's a great analogy. That's great. That's mm-hmm. a great way to describe the movie. So yeah, they're yet one of the. Fucking. <laughs> yep. So Snow White is still endorsed by Disney is cheddar cheese, and then Snow White, made by MGM, is blue cheese. (laughs) Oh, wow. Yeah, as far as I'm concerned, guys, uh, the movie musical uh, didn't really start until 1936 with Anything Goes. I haven't, uh, I haven't uh, particularly seen the movie. I have seen, I have seen the remake, which was uh, actually pretty terrible. But I'm, I'm uh, considering watching the original because after watching the stage play and seeing how, how everything was supposed to be with the story, it, it's got me very well intrigued. Uh, the jazz singer does not exist. I've actually uh, seen. No, I haven't seen any of the Anything Goes movie. The first time I actually heard of it was a stage show. Um, it's like a well, it's like a school play, but it had my friend with it, and it is a pretty interesting. It is a pretty interesting show. It's a very. It's a very like I could see that it's it's a very good like it's it seems more suiting for on stage then like i don't know if a, of um if it would work as much as a movie but it seems to like it really is made for the stage like like in terms of the songs in terms of the um like in terms of how like the style and everything like that it's very like it's really for the stage than it is for like as a movie mhm yeah, I, some somehow uh, it just somehow this uh, uh, this group of uh, middle school age kids that I saw on stage were able to do a much better job than uh, MGM in the nineteen fifties. Ouch! Ooh. I know. MGM seems they have a decline, like after the fifties and the seventies. Like they try to remake stuff and then. No wonder they're well, they had, down, like running out of business. Well, they did have uh, singing in the rain in the fifties, but uh, I'd be hard to, to I'd be hard to find one that uh, that topped that afterward. I guess that was like the climax, and then everything else is just the recession. I I cannot go into this episode without mentioning the ever, ever popular movie musical 
Moonwalker. Oh, dear. Yes. Oh, boy. The 1988 Michael Jackson film. Ah, memories of watching it as a child. Because my family was such a big fan of Michael Jackson. I still am. Oh, it was glorious. It was a feature of the music from the album Bad, and it had a plot at one point, but it went down to hill. (laughs) What? Oh, yeah, that thing. Yeah, that one plot thing at the end of the movie, but it didn't have continuity with the rest of the movie. Like, um... What is it? Well, the beginning obviously was a big homage to the damn Michael Jackson with all the clips and all the it's like crazy stuff. And then it goes into a bad segment where there's kids doing bad and they're being all goofy and shit. There was a point where Michael Jackson puts on this rabbit head and he turns into a claymation rabbit during the song of Speed Demon. Thanks, Will Benton. Mm-hmm. And then uh, I think the... Oh, yeah, because then throughout the, there was a chase sequence with that Speed Demon sequence. He transforms into Pee Wee Herman, Sylvester Stallone. <laughs> just, it just, it was a crazy segment. And then uh, at the end, it was a whole smooth criminal where Joe Peggy, 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 was the villain. And he was, mm-hmm. and he wants to give drugs to kids, and Michael Jackson has to stop him, and but it featured music from the album, Bad, and it was actually a fun ride, in my opinion. Mm-hmm. Well, I can understand that, but, like, I find Moonwalker is really, like, it's a fantastic film for those who love Michael Jackson. It depends on your point of view of how you think the guy yes. and his music. The more you love Michael Jackson, the more you will love Moonwalker. If you're the kind of person who doesn't really like Michael Jackson, if you're not sure about his style, and you see him more as a psychopathic pedophile, maybe this movie is not really for you, and all you're going to do is just make fun of it and make fun of Michael Jackson while you're watching it. That's kind of my point of view when I see it. Like, like I really like his songs are, are fantastic. I really like his songs. My family is not really a huge fan on the guy himself. Like, I remember not too long ago when we saw an interview with him, like, soon after he passed away. Like, my mom was really freaked out watching it because, like, she just saw Michael as, like, a major psychopath. Like, and I was like, oh, so that's why he's crazy. <laughs> oh, man. There's, oh. there's got to be skeptical people like that. You realize... Sorry, go on. I was going to finish with... Uh, what? People Stop. don't... They just judge him based upon what he's done in his life. And, you know, I moved beyond what he'd done in his life. And you're just like, you know what? He gave us great music. And I just enjoy his music in general. But that's what happens with all celebrities. Some people would rather want to see, like, the negative... like the negatives of, the, of, of major big name celebrities rather if it be true or not like i know i know how a lot of disney haters would look at walt disney as like a type ty- of like an anti-semitic tyrant even if they know if they don't even know that if he really is if he really doesn't like jews or not i'm noticing that there's a midsummer night's dream musical from 1920 1935 Wondering how you turn Shakespeare into a musical. Uh, other than Kiss Me Kate. Mr. Sullivan. But in any case, Mr. Sullivan mm-hmm. was going to bring up uh, a Midsummer's Night's nice Dream, if I believe I was right. From which year? Uh, 1935. Uh, oh, oh boy. All I, yeah. All I had to say was uh, passing through this. Oh, this had Mickey Rooney. Huh. Uh, yeah. Oh my god, a little Mickey Rooney? A little Mickey Rooney. A little Mickey Rooney for your taste, star. Ah. Yes, he was the little boy at one point, not the old man that we all know. It's a little pruny old man. <laughs> uh-huh. 
But uh, yeah, I was just moving on from Midsummer Night's Dream. Uh, all I had to say about that was, how do you turn Shakespeare into a musical other than Kiss Me Kate? <laughs> but um, in any case, um, oh, Matt, you were talking earlier about uh, about Disney. Uh, musicals and how they evolved over time. Yes. Uh, so has, so has the music. I've noticed it, although it particularly seems, in most cases, to evolve with the Broadway stylings of the time. Ah, yes, yes, that's very true. Yeah, th that's very true. That's mostly because um, that mostly started in the Disney Renaissance because they hired. Um, uh, they started out by hiring uh, Alan Menken and Howard Ashman, who before they had a really big background when it comes to uh, bro Broadway musicals. And um, I think uh, Howard Ashman joined uh, Disney right after the failure of the stage show of Little Shop of Horrors. So that 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 pretty much explains how the, where the Broadway sense came to be plus the fact that um like both the both these guys would often go out and hire um broadway stars like like when they got like Paige o'hara for bell or uh, jody benson for ariel and like it still goes on to this day like uh, recently for frozen i believe yeah for frozen uh they like those the music is written by a couple named Lopez, like the Lopez couple, the same people whom before they have done works on Broadway, like the Book of Mormon and um, uh, Avenue Q. And they just wrote the songs for, um, the, like I said, they recently wrote the songs for Frozen. And they would hire people like um, um, Idina Mendez, uh, a big Broadway star, and she, and she played the role of uh, El of Elsa in Frozen, the Snow Queen. So that pretty much Edina explains Menzel. what. Edina Menzel. Yeah. You're close. Yeah, that. Yeah. I'm not usually good with. Uh, I'm not usually good with uh, pronouncing names. Uh, a lot of people who watch my videos can confirm that, but. Um, no, but that that's pretty much the thing. Uh, that that that's pretty much that explains how Disney got their, uh, how they evolved with their musicals and got a more uh, Broadway touch to them. Mm -hmm. uh, well, what would you call it uh, before then? I guess uh, it's before... not so much. Um, before, it's kind of hard to explain. It could be a bit of their own thing. Y yeah, like, it's it's best described as that. It's more their own thing. It's not, it doesn't have more of a specific style. It could have a bit of an influence of how it was during that time. Although, like, it can be a bit of a mix like, even when it comes to the same, like, in the same movie, like, The Bare Necessities is much more different than, like, I Want to Be Like You, where it has a more jazzy feeling. Or, like, The Vulture's song, like, I think that's what Friends Are For, is a more, um, is a more barbershop quartet style. So they would go out and experience, like, back then they would really go and experiment they, they were really experimental and tried out so many different things. Plus the fact that, um, uh, what is it that I wanted to say? Ah, fudge. I got lost. Wait. Ah, oh, fudge, um, it. Yeah. <laughs> well, we'll put James. <laughs> um, no, but yeah, they're really experiment. Yeah, they're experimental. Like a great example of how they do this is in Sleeping Beauty. Because what they did is just that they would simply add lyrics to um, an or to an orchestral piece that already existed, which in this case is Tchaikovsky's Ballet of Sleeping Beauty. 
Mm-hmm. So uh, that, yes. that's, that's basically it. It's like back then they were like the only way I could describe it is that back then they were very experimental. While nowadays they're heading more for a more Broadway oriented um, musical. Yeah, you know, big Broadway. Yeah, big bra, big Broadway. Big bra. That's why some of their stuff. Uh, that's why some of their stuff uh, transcribes so well uh, going to the stage. Yeah, pretty but, much. Um, but like, sometimes it can be completely different. The Lion, like the Lion King, when you see it in theater, when you see it like on your DVD will be completely different than how you see it on stage. But yeah, yeah. they can ver- they can they can transcribe very well onto uh, the stage. And that's why some of them are are going very successfully like nowadays they got what The Lion King and The Newsies and I think there are a few more coming up. And I think actually I think just recently I heard they actually got out a Jungle Book musical with a few more songs, like new songs written by Richard Sherman. Hmm. Uh. Ah. Uh, ah, uh, for stage, you mean? What? For stage, you mean? Yeah, for stage. Uh. Not, not, not like a movie. No, no, I'm not talking about that live action movie that they want to make, but. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, that would be great. Oh, I could imagine that too. Uh, that would could, be interesting to see. You could bring back the mummy director again and have it be an adventure musical. Yes. <laughs> oh man. <clears throat> yes, because we all want to see like weird CG, weird realistic CGI monkeys. Doing like a dance from Happy Feet, going oh they do. I wanna be like you. Happy to be doing. I wanna be like you. <laughs> oh, oh, exactly. Um, interspersed with gunfire and you know <laughs> violence. Yes. Anyway, <laughs> um, I am a huge fan of the jukebox musicals, which is pretty much, you know, the there's music within the movie that kind of drives the plot towards the movie, in a way. Instead, of, uh, like nowadays, with movies, they have sound effects and there's no music that kind of drives the plot. Back then, jukebox musicals has was the music that kind of pushed the plot forward. It was like the driving force of the movie. Like there's some like the like Footloose was a jukebox musical, Flashdance was a jukebox musical. There was so many back in the eighties. Mm. And uh, another jukebox musical, kind of like Moonwalker, was the ever popular Pink Floyd's The Wall. If you're ever a fan of Pink Floyd and you like the album The Wall, they made this into a complete film. Using the album "The Wall." Ah, uh, yes, the uh, uh, the uh, most expensive art movie ever made. Yes, yes. Um, it it's <laughs> it's fan freaking tastic. The there's the there's animated sequences in the movies, and it's just blows your mind. It's like it's almost like a mind fuck of animation. It's it just blows your mind. It's like holy crap. But when it comes to the iconic song of Another Brick in the Wall, it just it leaves you breathless because uh, in the film, you know, it's portrayed as the teachers are jerks, badasses, jackasses, and the students don't want to be taught, and eventually. It, out of nowhere, the kids are these mindless, no-face kids, and they get dumped into a meat grinder. It just, oh my god, it just fucks with your mind. It's pretty much a crazy, 
it's, it's a, like a, a drug a drug trip, you know. It's like yeah, it's like if you're on drugs, that's what you feel like. You just pop the movie in, like, dude. Oh man. Yeah, yeah. I got that. I got that feeling from the movie that was that um, it was if if there was any a substance to the narrative was that it was uh, it was trying to uh, uh, follow the life of uh, of uh, of a man who was continuously becoming more and more uh, comfortably numb. Mm-hmm. Uh, to uh, to the chaotic world in which he had uh, in which he had created for himself. I didn't really think it was a. I and I I can dig artsy stuff, but there was something about this it just didn't jive with me. And I I respect I respect you know what uh, uh, what people say about it. A lot of people like it. Um, but after, it's just after um, another brick in the wall. Uh, that's that's the only thing that I really like about it. I guess that's the only song that I really like, except maybe Young Lust. And um, it uh, it 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 was supposed to be some sort of. Uh, social commentary at some point, particularly in another brick in the wall, but um, I didn't uh, I didn't get that as much as uh, some some fans did. You know, the first person that showed this to me was a, a friend of mine's uh, girlfriend who was possibly uh, stoned out at the time, uh, saying, "And this is the start of our generation right here." <laughs> <laughs> this is where it all began. This is where it all starts, James. We should and start writing a book. We should and start off with this. I'm just like, you're, you're high. Go home. <laughs> <laughs> Go home, dude. You're high. <laughs> and possibly drunk. What? Yeah, so that's coming from my point of view. I'm really, I mean, I do like the Broadway musical type musicals, but in my opinion, I prefer jukebox musicals. Well, let me explain a little something about jukebox musicals. I think uh, I, what I think uh, makes Wait, one what work. What do you mean by jukebox? What what do you mean by jukebox musicals? I'm 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 a little bit unfamiliar. All right, let me. The term. the term is like, just imagine a jukebox. You put a coin yeah. in, you put yeah. you play the song, and that's what it plays in the song in the movies. Uh. It's just a recorded, you know. It's not like a fully fledged. Oh, uh, uh, the oh, okay, yeah, 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 yeah. I get what you mean. They just. They just uh, play a song in they the movie. They just play popular, like they would play known, like so, like well-known songs that are not made for the movie. Uh, yes and no. Sometimes these uh, songs are made for the movie, but they're played, but it's popular within the decade. Depends on what like, the movie is. Oh, uh, okay. But like, would something like Moulin Rouge or Happy Feet count as a jukebox musical? Yes. Yes. Okay, now I got gotcha. you. All right. But actually, so, I want to mention um, one jukebox musical that would probably fit in with what you guys were talking about because you guys were mentioning like all these like trippy factors regarding of um, you know rather it be like the wall or how like psychedelically weird and it, it can be. If there's one that I really want to mention, and this is something that really put its foot onto the history of animation, Yellow Submarine, with the mm -hmm. songs from the Beatles. Mm -hmm. This is really some... Now, it really is trippy and weird in, in a sense. Like, you can argue, like, this is like some kind of stoner's movie, but in another sense, I feel like Yellow Submarine could be, like, the perfect fantasy film. Because they pretty much made something in which it's a world of its own. 
it, it pretty much made a, a world where it has its own set of rules and its own sense of lifestyle that is completely outside of ours. <laughs> and it really is interesting to look at. It has, like, the animation itself, sure, that looks very cheap, but it kind of wor it works to its advantage in a sense. Plus the fact that you got all these different, like, the songs, essentially they fit well. It's the kind of songs from the Beatles that they're very psychedelic and you don't really understand what it means from Lucy in the Sky with Diamonds or like Hey Bulldog or, or uh, Nowhere Man and stuff like that. Uh, like they, they incorporate it into the film and somehow they made, they made it in a sense where it makes sense when you watch it. You un like there's a, there's a side of you that you feel like you understand the songs. So like it really does put the songs into advan advantage and it really does make like really make the movie its own thing. Like it's not just like an, a series of music videos for the Beatles. It's pretty much its own movie. Yeah. I, th I can, I can see that if you want to, if you want a series of music, if you want a film, that's a series of music videos for the Beatles, try magical mystery tour. But, uh, uh yellow submarine, uh, <laughs> yellow submarine is a, uh, it's, it, it's not a, a tremendous film by my by my standards, but it is a it is a a trip. You know, they uh, from what I re remember, they did a good job of interpreting or incorporating, I should say, uh, Beatles music. And uh, unlike uh, unlike another case of a film which I'd like to bring up if that's all right with you guys mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. okay um huh? yeah they're uh very uh what uh like what matt was saying you you have to in jukebox musicals you have to make uh you have to make sure that um uh, the song, the songs may not be written for the movie, but um, uh, I think you have to write the movie for the songs. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, in which case, uh, that's why if you look, uh, if you look at movies made in recent years, uh, Mamma Mia, uh, which is uh, a musical that used uh, ABBA music. And Thank you, uh, Boston. <laughs> and I happen to love, despite uh, uh, Pierce Brosnan's rather mediocre singing, um, uh, the uh, the music and the film they all they all are written so that they they feel like they were made for each other. Uh, the um, the story, the stories in the songs uh, used, they tell stories to begin with, and so the movie is just uh, is just taking that vibe and playing off of that. This or the plot of the film is just taking the stories from the songs and meshing them together, and that's why uh -huh. that's what makes it work. Um, other examples like uh, uh, other examples like Across the Universe and um, uh, uh, Rock of Ages. Uh, Rock to of me, Ages. they don't. Ew. Yes. Yeah. To me, they don't do this. They don't. Uh, they don't pick any anything clever out of the songs. They just. Uh, uh, they just sing it. They just, yeah. They just uh, said, "Here's a here's a bunch of songs that we can use from this particular era or for this particular group." 
and let's uh, let's make something out of it. Uh, across the universe, uh, Julie Taymor, uh, who was amazing with The Lion King and uh, has has sort of written that uh, success ever since, had a, an entire library of Beatles music to choose from and uh, gave us a very, a very trippy uh, film with Across the Universe that... Uh, uh, that took uh, that sort of tossed narrative to the four winds, and uh, at at times, and uh, uh, gave us a uh, gave us a, a historically inaccurate look at the Vietnam War, which uh, I which mm. I don't know what it was trying to say. <laughs> yeah, oh, it, it, it's a bat like. Where, where Yellow Submarine is some, is something that you want to go back to. It's like it's a fun, it's trippy, but it's fun at the same time. Across the universe just feels like a bad trip. It's like it, it, you do have a sense of the familiar, but it's like yeah, it's like I don't know if I want to do this again. <laughs> you but, have really um, good. You have really good. Uh, jokes in there like uh with the uncle sam singing i want you oh yeah and then you've got (laughs) yeah and then you've got uh and then you've got that contrasted with uh eddie izzard singing um oh oh, yeah mr kite for the benefit of the benefit of mr kite be a show tonight on trampolines with uh oh uh, they that was just a, a mind warp of a sequence there. They were, I, I think, I think she, it was like the, the movie got hijacked by Moulin Rouge for, for five <laughs> minutes. <laughs> and no, it's really. the bastard child of Moulin cut. Rouge in the 60s. There's not as much shortcuts or there's not as much uh, sound effects. I was like, like imagine, like he would just listen to to uh, uh during that freaking to uh oh, what the frick so like um like come together it was like here come old flat top <laughs> god oh gosh well just for the benefit of mr kite sequence <laughs> yes that's all i was saying yes it's like no, it's like I can imagine. It's like ba- Baz and Lerman just pushed off Julie Tamer. It's like now it's my turn. <laughs> it's my turn now. But anyways, um, I find it really interesting, James, that you mentioned how um, how these films would come to get like how to make movies work, how to make um, how to make movies work with the songs when it comes to jukebox musicals. There is one musical that I want to talk about. It's going to be coming out in theaters next year, but my mom is a huge, huge fan of the musical already. It's um, Jersey Boys. Technically, it's um, technically oh. it's a yeah. Jersey Boys is pretty much it's it's a biography about it's a, yeah it's a biography about. Uh, the uh, Frankie Valley and the Four Seasons, and pretty much um, the songs actually don't really have much. They don't make sense in the music. They don't make sense. Like they don't really work the the songs into the musical. They don't work around it in the familiar style. Like it, it doesn't really have much to do with the story. What they do is actually very interesting, is that they would use the songs as if, like, um, the 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 Four Seasons are are performing the songs, like they go out, like they go on, like often they would come they would come on stage, and like act and like be on act act on a show while playing their songs. It's like it. None of the songs really tie in with this, with uh, what they're doing, 
they just play it for their shows. And that's all because the, the whole show is pr- the whole like Broadway show of the Jersey boys is, uh, is pretty much the biography of these guys and what mm-hmm. they do. And when, did, when do they uh, like write, like when do they write these songs and stuff like that? So mm-hmm. like, so like there, so I just wanted to say that there are ways for jukebox musicals to not make the songs like to not work with the songs into the stories like Jersey boys set off a really good example of that. Okay. Well, I'll be, I'll be looking forward to, to seeing what they, what they did with that. You'll be that singing. Even though I never saw the, <laughs> keep in mind, this is, from I... the same, this is from the same huh? people that goes, Fudge, I just lost my voice. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, but get this. Do you know who's directing it? Oh, what am I? Wait, I, I know it's a familiar director. Who is it? Oh, yes! Back in yes, 63. Yes, yes, yes. You know what's actually funny is that they actually start off in French. And it's so hilarious. It's like, I know. Oh, Kel, oh, Belle Kel Soir. Donoma J. Save or George Reed. <laughs> and as a Montrealer, as someone from Montreal, my mom actually watched this and she couldn't stop laughing. <laughs> but uh, the director, <laughs> the, 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 the director of the upcoming Jersey Boys is Clint East, Eastwood. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Whoa, whoa. <laughs> Clint Eastwood is directing Jersey Boys. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> yep. Did that blow your mind or what? <laughs> I it's going it. to be badass. <laughs> if it's Clint Eastwood <laughs> directing, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I could just, yeah, I could just imagine now, like, I was like, someone would play, like, a, a, a Clint, like, one of the four seasons just plays like a Clint Eastwood type of character, just like, uh, oh, what a night. Lady uh, in summer 63. Just remember, <laughs> big girls don't cry. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to kill you, your mama. They don't cry, you know, you they have to act like their teeth are just wired sh- like they just ate a glue uh like they just ate a bunch of crazy glue and their teeth are stuck uh a, a highly grizzled up uh, uh four seasons <laughs> it's gonna be maybe they're maybe they had deals with the mob or something that we don't know about they act you know that you know no joke. Uh, that's actually a really important part of the uh, Broadway show. That's oh, how they the, that's how they get. That's how they actually went up to get their fame. Oh, so I so nailed it. Okay, that's why Clint Eastwood is directing. He's going to play up that angle with the movie. Pretty much. Oh, by the way, you. I think one of the mob bosses. You know who's going to be playing it? One of the mob bosses. Who Clint else? Eastwood? Nope. Walken. <laughs> Christopher <laughs> Walken. <laughs> oh my god. So, so long we as got... he jumps up on the... We got Christopher Walken in the film and we got Clint Eastwood directing. So we got a, a, bro- a movie based on the Broadway show based on the life of the Four Seasons and Frankie Valli which will be directed by Clint Eastwood and have a mob boss played by Christopher Walken. Uh, uh, so long as he jumps up on the table and actually starts singing Let's Misbehave. No, like, he, no, like he'll start dancing to, like, they'll play Weapon of Choice and Christopher Walken will just <laughs> dance off. I got a gold now. I have another meeting to attend. Weapon of choice. 
Oh, wow. Oh, my gosh. Uh, <laughs> so if we're done uh, talking about Jersey Boys, uh, here we have another upcoming musical. Um, looks like we got Annie being oh. remade. Oh, oh my god! I heard about that. I was. I heard it, about this. Isn't it one the one that uh, um Miley? Uh, <laughs> no, um, Will Smith's daughter is gonna be in. Are you gonna say Miley Cyrus? I was gonna say it. I know. I screwed up. <laughs> yeah, Will Smith's daughter is gonna be in or something. It's gonna be produced by Jay Z. I um, give it like a hard life. <laughs> I'm sorry. I just had to. Sorry. Go on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's Bye, uh. Actually, no. It's produced by it's produced by Will Smith and yeah. Jay Z, but it stars uh, Kui Kui. Oh, that's right. That's right. Yep, 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 yep. I remember now because the yeah. casting was. Yep, that's right. Yep, it's coming back to me now. Yep. Yep. Um. Yeah, and it's actually a really interesting choice uh, it for is. those of you who don't know who this girl is. She's actually the girl who got um, a, nominated for Best Actress for playing the role of Hush Puppy in Beast of the Southern Wilds, which will be an interesting choice. But, you know, another thing that seems interesting is that um, apparently the role of Annie was supposed to be played by Will Smith's daughter, Willow Smith, in another attempt to make their kids, to make uh, Will Smith's offsprings famous. Mm-hmm. Like he like I can imagine Will Smith just wants to do like another After Earth, you know. <laughs> I haven't seen that yet. No comment. So it's really interesting to see that this is going to be a um, a, a pretty much uh, how can I how can I put this lightly? An African American retelling of the classic. Um, Broadway show. Yeah. This is going to be for Annie, or the original Annie, what the Wiz was for The Wizard of Oz. Yes. That's what I was thinking. Yes. I was thinking that exactly. Oh, um, God, but are we going to have, like, more... Does this mean we're going to have, like, more pop... Like, pop-like songs? Like, you know how in... Um, it'll be, like, more rap-influenced or something. Well, I mean, we do have Jay-Z. Yeah, yeah. Jay Z did oh. do a rap cover of "Hard Knock Life" already. Yeah, yeah. I heard. Yeah. Did he? Yeah, he did. For real, for real, Matt. He did. Really? I am not okay. shitting you. Yes. I, I, I was li- about to do a joke that Jay Z would would go out. I was like, "Yo, it's gonna be a hard night life for us." Come on. You man. remember? A- do you remember in Austin Powers and Gold Member when? Uh, Dr. Evil starts rapping about a third of the way yeah. through the film. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That was, a, that was a takeoff on the Jay-Z song, Hard Knock Life. Really? Oh, my yes. God. Yes. That's what he was making fun of there. Oh. But that, that's the going to be... The joke is writing itself. Oh my lord! No wonder, no wonder, no wonder Mike Myers got an easy shot on that. No, but I'm just wondering, like, no, but like for real, for this Annie musical, do you think they're really gonna take that route, or are they still gonna just disregard the race and just move on with the Annie musical, like as is, make it like the Annie musical? Uh, uh, that's a good question. Oh, I wait, hope they make it like the any musical. Oh, wait a minute, wait oh, a minute. Uh-oh, okay. original songs, Jay-Z. <laughs> yep. Oh, oh, wait. Oh, oh, I found oh, another oh, thing. Oh, oh. I found another thing. May 2012, when Will Smith appeared on Good Morning America and provided updates, including that the film will be set in modern-day New York City, Confirming Thompson was providing a script that Jay Z would also provide provide newly written songs for the film. Mm-hmm. So this will be a modern retelling of Annie, and possibly have like rap songs and stuff like that. Oh, it's oh, going to have rap songs. Like, yep. Yes, yes, Annie is now hip. 
Yep. She's hip. She's yep. bitty, hippity, hippity, hip hop hop. <laughs> I wonder if it's going to be hippity hop before the gangsters. <laughs> uh, and see, it, does she wear. Is, is, uh, is Wallace going to wear her hair in that, uh, is what, that what sort part? of uh, afro look <laughs> for this? Oh, I uh... just have a big afro. Oh, God. Oh, God. Well, well, Annie always did have an afro going. You know, poofy, oh, it was oh, only yeah, yeah, poofy yeah, red yeah, hair. The poofy, That's true. Yeah, that That's... is true. Oh, God. It could be. Oh, God. It was like a... Is like an Irish white girl's afro, you know. Uh, but um, I'm looking at the rest of this and saying, okay, you got Jamie Foxx in the role of Benjamin Stacks, an upcoming care, an update of the character Daddy Warbucks. How many other characters are they going to rename here? Uh, like, oh, every single one of them. Oh look, we're going to get a can. Oh look. Oh, it looks like they're gonna be. It looks like Annie's gonna go on Radio Dead Air. There's gonna be a character named Nash. <laughs> nah, I'm just kidding. Nah. Do do do. Anyway, no, no, no. It says Adwal Akinwe Ajbaje as Nash, the tough but lovable bodyguard and driver for Stax, and a good friend of Annie. I guess that's gonna be the Punjab for this. Uh, uh, for this movie. I'm in which sure, case we can, in I which was, case we can, uh, we can successfully say that Jay Z never saw the play, in which there was no Punjab. Yeah. Wait, oh boy. Punjab. Okay. Yeah, Punjab was uh, Denny Warbucks's uh, bodyguard in the uh, in the old movie. I guess that's replaced with Nash. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, Bobby Cannavale as a bulldog political advisor. Oh God, we're gonna we're gonna get political with this. Oh, we're okay. gonna get a bulldog. <laughs> I'd rather have a bulldog. <laughs> All I can imagine <laughs> is like, no, we're gonna have like um. Oh, what was it? And we're gonna be—it's gonna be like little Nikki. We're just gonna have a talking bulldog. <laughs> now, be, now sticks. Pay attention. Now we can't really afford this Annie girl with us, but if you think you can, maybe we'll let her stay. Say me, say me. Hey, Mr. Politics, say it, say it, Mr. Politics, and I love you. <laughs> uh, uh. God damn. <coughs> so yeah, instead of to see instead Mr. of the nineteen thirty, expect to see Mr. Beefy in the upcoming Annie. <laughs> oh, and I just thought of something else. Uh, mm. uh, if uh, if in the original, if the original Andy musical uh, took place in the 1930s and had her meeting FDR, uh, this new Andy musical is contemporary. What president do you think she's going to meet? Barack Obama. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yes. Yep. Thanks, Obama. Yes. <laughs> Thanks, Obama, for everything. Oh, boy. Uh, I'll just leave it at that. Um, <laughs> yeah, so... Obama. That's all you'll say. It's going to be like, by the way, Obama's going to be in it. Yeah. I didn't say that. I didn't say like that, but I, I'm, I'm... You didn't I'm say pretty... anything else. You just said Obama's going to be in it. And then you, you made just... it sound like it, I said it was... You admitted you were saying like he said. I said he was asking who do you think the president's gonna be? I said Obama. Oh. Yeah. Oh, okay. I must have read I know we sound do we sound that much alike? Do we? Wow. Oh. Wow, Matt, you need to open your ears. Hey, I get lost sometimes. <laughs> I'm I I you know, I might be a bit of a fraud to what I'm exposed to the internet. I'm not 
often as smart as you think. I'm smarter than the average bear. I know a lot about animation, but other than that, good luck. <laughs> good luck to you, fine gentlemen. Yep. Um, let's see. Okay. Uh, Mike, it's been a while you said. Moving you onward. I think we've tra- I think we've pre-trashed the any musical enough. Yeah. 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 So if there's one, so if there's going to be one musical you're going to check out next year, looks like it's going to be Jersey Boys. But for me, it's going to be Muppets yeah. Most Wanted. Uh, that that may be as well. And don't forget Rio too. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Oh yes, yes, that's true. That's true. I got to check out Rio too. Yes, it's your. You have an obligation to your fans. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, yes. I have a duty. You have a duty to do that. Yes. Yes, yeah. yes, yes. Um. That's bad. That's but that's very good. Yes, very good. Moving forward. Okay. Yeah. Um, I'd like to address something here that this list has. Uh, as an upcoming, but uh, we both we all know that that's in the past. Now, um, what do you mean? Oh yeah, forgot to mention Into the Woods. That might be interesting. Uh, Into the, oh, yeah. Teen Beach movie. What? That isn't that the the Disney movie thing? What? Yeah, it's a Teen Disney Beach movie. movie. Yeah, a Disney Channel movie. Um, Wait, the what? That was released this. Wait a minute, where are we going? Into the woods or what the fridge am I? Where the fridge am I? <laughs> okay, James is talking about Team Beach movie. He mentioned Into the Woods would be interesting to go see. Oh, yeah. oh okay, so we're talking about Teen Beach movie. The Disney Channel original movie. Okay, screw that crap. <laughs> <laughs> That's the short. That's the short version of it, but I'm going to go a little bit more in depth. Here, um, oh all I all I've seen of this movie are a, are a few uh, are a few clips of the of the musical numbers, and I I've come to a realization. It is a it is a re. Not only is it a re- repeat of the high school musical format. Um, mm. But they are, but they with with this movie they uh, they show that you can only water down the same formula before the source material starts showing. That sounds painful. This this has uh, this has a number with guys in greaser outfits. Uh, singing about, uh, I think, driving around in a car, or was it a motorcycle? If that sounds familiar... Wait. Motorcycle? The what? The, it's, alright, it's a motorcycle gang. Yes, it's a motorcycle gang. Essentially, yeah. essentially they did it. Here. They ripped off Grease. Yeah, that's what I just thought of. It was like, wait. In that, wait, doesn't Greece have a motorcycle gang? Uh, well, so uh, it's, it's a not a motorcycle gang. It's a they're gangs, you know, uh, that love cars. But it's the same idea, you know. They're you listen to the song and it's Grease Lightning. I can't help but think Grease Lightning when I'm listening to these guys. <clears throat> well, let me uh, bring this up here because I've uh, sort of seen the movie and I sort of know what they're getting at with this movie. It's actually an homage to all the beach movies back in the 60s, those, those musical beach movies. And it's also dedicated to the beach party film star Annette Funicello. Funicello? Annette Funicello. Yeah. Oh. So, oh. It's, so it's an homage to, uh, to all the beach party film musicals and a dedication to her and what she did. Yeah, but then again, it's Disney Channel, and they're making a live-action musical. Do you think they're going to get that right? 
Well, well, they have a handful of times where they got it right, but this is where. Well, this is like the more modern, like this is the more modern times, you know. Yeah, it is. It's the yeah, more nowadays not, uh, thing. This is not eight years ago. <laughs> yeah, no, I know this is this year, but still, you know. Mm-hmm. Like, have they ever gone up since? Like, have they gone up since then? Like, since like post, freaking Camp Rock or post High School Musical? No, but they're trying. Yeah, but trying is another thing, James. <laughs> of course, uh, they're, of course, they're gonna try to do that. But are they going to succeed? It. No, they're they're. This is like with anything. What you're going to do is rerun the the same uh, formula until it runs out of gas. And there was not even I gas in gas. there to begin with. <laughs> right here. Right now. And I'm oh, looking God. at you. Oh God! I gotta put up some. Uh, I gotta put up some Godforsaken uh, Mickey unwrap now. <laughs> I need to drown this off. I must. I must drown Teen Beach movie with Mickey unwrapped. <laughs> Actually, that was High School Musical three. You're gonna boo that. <laughs> yep. <laughs> I gotta put on Whoop There It Went! <laughs> Oddly enough, Whoops There It Went is actually the only time that Take Team came back. So that's Take Team! Whoop There It Went! Yeah, listen. There it went. Whoop There It Went! <laughs> <laughs> I just had to do something. Mm-hmm. I had to block that. I had to block any Disney Channel thing. And the only first input I have to go is like, screw it, I'm going Mickey Unwrapped. It's one, <laughs> at least it's one stage higher than a Disney Channel song. <laughs> uh, oh my god. Um, that was the sound of me pounding my forehead against the desk. Uh, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, it's not like the uh, it's not like the the high school musical films were perfect by any chance, but yeah, I, I did notice the common hold on. the common thing between each film was that they were they seemed comfortable almost retelling the same story. It's like, oh, you're cute, let's hook up. Oh, let's get back together. Oh, let's hook up. Uh, oh, let's break up. Oh, let's get back together. Oh, let's break up. Oh, let's get back together. So. As per usual, I normally end the episodes with a random, unusual, what the fuck movie of the topic. Mm -hmm. This, you know, by the way, just to let you know, there are a lot more things to talk about. We we need to have a, like go on the dartboard and put in a part two of this. Oh yeah, I'm definitely gonna put a pin mark. Uh, uh, trust me, this this gave us a bunch of materials, and there are so many. There more is, there is, there's a lot more to talk about, and we didn't even hit a fraction of it. So yeah, this will definitely be a, a part two of this. That's for sure. Part two. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Anyways. Yes, we'll have an update on the Annie musical. Yes, probably oh, by yes. the time it comes out. You never know, because you never know. You never know when it's going to be a part two of this. Anyways, <clears throat> let me introduce to you the first monster musical from 1964. The incredibly strange creatures who stopped living and became mixed up zombies. Oh, yeah. That's a thing. In the film, three films visit a carnival and stumble into a group... Of disfigured monsters. <clears throat> uh, where, <sighs> where do I go with this? First off, it's a monster musical. And I... Uh, uh, um, how do you put this into a musical? How... I, um, hmm... 
This looks like something for the for the cinema snob. Yes. Yes, definitely. Yeah, definitely. I was just thinking about that now because it just. I mean, there's no other person that would probably review this. I mean, oh, where, I don't even know where to talk about it. I mean, I looked at the title. I was like, what the heck did I just read? Apparently, it's um, it's apparently the second longest titled film in the horror genre. Genre with the first being. Roger Corman's The Saga of the Viking Women and Their Voyage to the Waters of the Great Sea Serpent. Oh, yeah, I see where... Yep. Yeah. <laughs> Is that a musical, too? No. Is it? No, I don't think so. It would have been on the list. It yeah. No, it was just a, it's a Roger Corman film. It's a Well, yeah, it's Roger that, Corman. That, that, so... That's a whole different genre. <laughs> It's only a $65,000 movie, that's all. <laughs> yeah, don't worry about it. Yeah, let's let's do that as a subject for an upcoming film, actually. Let's do a Roger Corman episode. Uh, oh, God, but I just realized this movie, the movie that we're talking about now, is apparently only 38000 Yeah, the budget is 38000 and the running time is 82 minutes. Yeah. That's like... That's like, in animation terms, that's like a nickel. <laughs> in animation terms. But yeah, um, this film has also been uh, lampooned in 1997 by the Mystery Science Theater 3000 team. Yeah. So if you guys want to check the movie out, Mystery Science Theater has you covered. <laughs> well, Mystery Science Theater is Mystery Science Theater, so... So yeah, it's always... And of course... Because of this movie, there's a 70s Melbourne Australian band who named themselves after the film. What, the... Hold on. Wait, can I see? Where where would it... A key group of the 1970s Melbourne post-punk little band scene named themselves after the film. Mm. So, I guess there's a oh, band... Oh, yes, I found it. I found it. Oh, okay, there we go. What, did they call themselves the Incredibly Strange Creatures? Who, oh, yeah, okay. Yeah, that's the band. <laughs> that's the band. So, can you imagine a band going around and be like, hey, we're the Incredible Strange Creatures that stopped living and became mixed up zombies. Or, like, how, how do you put that in, like... On an album cover. No, not just that, but, like, in, like... Just, uh, how do I say this? Like, an anecdote or, like... Well, you know when you put the first letters, like... Tis Kurslad the moves anagram. Yeah, anagram, thank you, thank you. The Tis Kurslad moves. Oh God! I think I can summon a demon somewhere in Slovakia. <laughs> 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 oh dear god in heaven oh dear god in heaven okay so yeah i've i'm totally speechless about the movie i just i've i've just noticed the title was like okay i might have to go watch this now oh you haven't seen it yet <laughs> wow if i knew i was gonna see that in the list i would watch it before i even came on to this episode i would have told y'all about it but <laughs> damn it let me tell you a little story of the incredibly strange creatures who stopped living and became mixed up zombies uh it was a lovely story about monsters and teenagers going to a carnival this was released at a time when teen beach movies were popular. Yes, yes, teen beach movies were popular back in the day where we were surfing all the good stuff and we were singing songs about beach bingo and all the good stuff. <laughs> beach bingo. And that's why you've never heard of this movie, because it flopped. It flopped <laughs> a big woobity doobity boop. It's because Roger Corman... Yeah, because it was Roger Corman. It was just because... Oh wait, no, that's no, that's the Viking women. I forgot. <laughs> I got mixed up with the Viking women and the zo and the mon strange creatures. <laughs> well, what's the difference, really? Yeah. You. You know, I'll be honest. When you talked about a monster musical, 
I was expecting something from the Sesame Street. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, <laughs> with Sesame Street, it's not hard thinking of singing monsters. Yeah, yeah. Or how about the Oogie Loves? Oh, no! 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 I totally forgot about that. Oh, oh. God. Oh, that's God. like... that's. I don't know where that came from. That came out of nowhere. Oh, It came out of James's mouth. Okay. <laughs> yeah, you, yeah, you threw... Yeah, you apparently threw up on the world. Thus came out the freaking Oogie Loves. <laughs> Let's get in there! Oh, love! Yeah. Hooray, I gave Ryan Hip an e- a reason to exist. <laughs> oh, my God. oh my God. Okay, um, so that being that, we have finally came to a close of this episode. We'll have a part two of this whenever available in the future. And uh, as the time being, why don't you guys pick a number and I'll find out the next episode. All right. Uh, what, uh, what's the range for this? Uh, I think it's, what is it, 1 through 20? Including the bullseye, if you want to do a bullseye topic. Oh, you're not going to throw a dart? Oh, this is the last week of this, because next week will be totally normal. Or next couple of weeks. Oh, okay, okay. I'm thinking 4. 11. 11 is box office flops. Okay. Four is the Mad Max franchise. Mad Max. I Flops. Flop. <laughs> what the? Let's we, vote again. We uh, we went for each other's. <laughs> yeah, I just weird. It's like you yeah. guys flip flopped. It's like. <laughs> oh great. I mean, could we talk about? I'm I'm just thinking. You know, can we talk about good movies for once? Yes. Well, sure. There, well, there, there, there are good movies. Like, just because a movie flopped doesn't mean that, like, it's bad. Uh, yeah. Uh, I can think of so many great films that are box office flops. Really? Yeah. I just. Uh, Am I wrong? I just had a recent episode on the uh, the Nutcracker in 3D, so I don't know. <laughs> No, you're not wrong. Oh. Okay. Okay, your move, Mike. I know. I know. Hold on. <laughs> Shit. Oh, God. We, this is like the worst episode prediction ever. Okay, so what I probably have to do is flip a coin. Okay. So, let's see. We'll have... Heads being box off flops, tails being Mad Max franchise. <laughs> ah, this is bad. Oh, this is the last time I'm doing this because next next couple weeks I'll be back home. For fuck's sake. Fucking box office flops. Wow. That's what we're going for. Yep. There we go. Was that so hard? Nope, it wasn't. And there should be some good stuff to talk about. <laughs> you make it sound painful. Uh, the Nutcracker in 3D. The uh, Let's see. The Adventures of Pluto Nash. Uh, the Lone Rangers. Mom, Mars and his Moms. The Sound uh, yeah, of yeah, Thunder. Yeah, not those ones. <laughs> Which one are you talking about? You think, um, what? Secret uh, Water World. Secret of Nim, um, Treasure Planet, the Dark, the Dark Crystal. There are some. That Treasure Planet. Treasure Planet. Better than expected. Atlantis, The Lost Empire. Animated movies mainly. Oh. He's coming from your end. <laughs> yeah, from my end. I'm sure we'll find some good ones. Yes, mm. yes. So stay tuned next time. Oh, cut- Tron, actually. I think that that flopped. I need to watch Cutthroat Island now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, stay tuned next time in a couple of weeks when we talk about box office bombs slash flops. With that, I'm Mike. 
I'm out of I'm so out of gum. I'm gonna get some more gum for chewing and talking about movies. Good night. Good luck. See you later, dudes. And with that, I end with. <laughs> Wow, this is worse than I thought. <laughs> this was a mistake. Okay, I'll stop now. <laughs> <laughs> Ducks in the hood. No, that was Ice Ice Mickey. Ice Ice Mickey, yeah. Now sing it.